So we're now learning more about Tucker Carlson's firing from Fox News, thanks to a new report published in The New York Times. And it most likely all came down to a single text message. At least that's what started the beginning of the end for Tucker Carlson. So the text message in question, which we'll look at in a moment here, was sent to a producer on January 7th of 2021, just one day after the Capitol insurrection. And that text message was, uh, let's just say, problematic to say the least, according to the board of Fox News. As the New York Times explains, a text message sent by Tucker Carlson that set off a panic at the highest levels of Fox on the eve of its billion-dollar defamation trial showed its most popular host sharing his private inflammatory views about violence and race. The discovery of the message contributed to a chain of events that ultimately led to Mr. Carlson's firing. The text message added to a growing number of internal issues involving Mr. Carlson that led the company's leadership to conclude he was more of a problem than an asset and had to go, according to several people with knowledge of the decision. Now, we'll look at the text here in a moment, but that reportedly set off alarm at Fox News with their board of directors because they were worried that that text would become public at the Dominion trial. So ultimately, the Dominion lawsuit ended up leading to Tucker Carlson's undoing. Now, the Times also reports that a day after discovering that text message, Fox News' board hired outside legal counsel to further investigate Tucker Carlson's conduct because they were that rattled by it. But without further ado, here's the text message that ultimately led to his demise. Quote, a couple of weeks ago, I was watching a video of people fighting on the street in Washington. A group of Trump guys surrounded an Antifa kid and started pounding the living shit out of him. It was three against one at least. Jumping a guy like that is dishonorable, obviously. It's not how white men fight. Yet, suddenly, I found myself rooting for the mob against the man, hoping they'd hit him harder, kill him. I really wanted them to hurt the kid. I could taste it. Now, he goes on to explain here that he stopped himself from psychopathically rooting for another human being's death because that made him just as bad as the Antifa kid, apparently. So, yeah, to put it mildly, that is a very... Yikes take from Tucker Carlson. White men don't fight dirty. But I mean, are you sure about that, Tucker Carlson? Because Benjamin Dixon shared Tucker Carlson's quote with this photo of a bunch of white people smiling in amusement at two black men who were lynched. White men don't fight like that, my ass. But I mean, sanitizing the history of white violence against black people is a core component of white supremacy. But I mean, just personally speaking, seeing that quote from Tucker Carlson didn't surprise me at all. But apparently Fox News' board of directors saw that and uh, this was the look on their faces. Oh my God, could it be that our beloved Tucker Carlson is a white supremacist? (laughs) This text is just so out of character. I mean, (laughs) it's honestly just shocking that That tweet rattled them so much, given every single thing that Tucker Carlson has said on national television for years that they've paid him to say, mind you. And I've talked about it quite a bit on this program, but in case you missed it, here's a compilation put together by Media Matters and Mehdi Hassan show demonstrating how anyone who's been paying attention should not be surprised by that text from Tucker Carlson. They're trying to change the population of the United States. And they hate it when you say that because it's true, but that's exactly what they're doing. Is anyone pushing back at all? I have less political power because they're importing a brand new electorate. Why should I sit back and take that? How much longer do you think Americans will put up with this? How long before Americans start to take border enforcement into their own hands? We have absolutely the right to know. We should demand to know now. Every time they import a new voter, I become disenfranchised as a Mm. current voter. No, they're not allowed to do that. Why are we putting up with this? Most people go along with this absurd standard. They dutifully shut up. They don't think they have a choice. You wonder how much longer they imagine Americans are going to go along with this. It can't go on forever, but you can see why they're trying it. Demographic change is the key to the Democratic Party's political ambitions. Our leaders have no right to encourage foreigners to move to this country in order to change election results. Abrupt change causes social chaos, always. What will the consequences of that change, of that revolution be? In your bones, you know the answer. It's terrifying, and it doesn't have to happen. You cannot overstate the scale of demographic change underway right now in the United States. It's a direct assault on our democracy. They don't even really care about your vote anymore. 
Their goal is to make you irrelevant. You're just an American citizen, shut up and obey. They know that calling you a racist is the fastest way to make you obey. In other words, you're being replaced and there's nothing you can do about it. So shut up. <laughs> if you don't obey them, they denounce you as a racist. Why do they do this? They do it because it works. But here's the thing, it can only work if you play along with it. And we don't plan to. White supremacy, that's the problem. This is a hoax. There's no evidence that white supremacists were responsible for what happened on January 6th. That's a lie. We have a moral obligation to admit the world's poor, they tell us, even if it makes our own country poorer and dirtier and more divided. Demographics, demographic, demographics, demographics, demographic. Remember the great replacement theory? Was it conspiracy theory? It sounds more like a statistical fact. Ilhan Omar is living proof that the way we practice immigration has become dangerous to this country. Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, herself a symbol of America's failed immigration system. Can a single human being actually be as loathsome as Ilhan Omar is? It's hard to believe. Diddy Montel Williams, you know, is something that's within her range of experience. Is she good at it? We can't say, she's, but she's done it. Just for masochistic reasons, can you do it one more time? <laughs> So it might be time for Joe Biden to let us know what Kentaji Brown Jackson's LSAT score was. What else are you doing the LSATs? They think that you should be elevated in America based on what you do, on the choices you make, not on how you're born, not in your DNA, because that's Rwanda. 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 We're still not precisely sure how George Floyd died. Very few unarmed black men are killed by white cops these days. Where's George Floyd when you need him? The only job training program this administration has gotten behind in two and a half years is getting black people to sell more weed in the cities. You never see politicians transition into, say, Malcolm X. Why is that? Maybe because Malcolm X didn't talk like a sharecropper. Xenophobia! It seems almost antique. This show, more than any other show on television, has taken an aggressive position in favor of colorblind equality and against racism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, believe it or not, there are still people who defend Tucker Carlson and maintain that he is not a white supremacist. He's not racist. He just cares about changing demographics and white people being replaced. Ooh, ooh. It's just deeply unserious to say that this man is anything but a raging racist. And after years of that, after years of what we just watched, Fox News's board of directors was shocked to learn that, um, yeah, maybe this text indicates that he is indeed racist. And to be clear, it's not like Tucker Carlson was a multidimensional individual. White supremacy wasn't just like one small aspect about his entire personality. That was his brand. And Fox News executives, they knew this. I'm sorry. They don't get to just play dumb here. They were probably uncomfortable that he began to say the quiet part loud more frequently, but because he was bringing in a lot of eyeballs to Fox News, they decided to just not act until it started to affect their business. So let me be very clear here. I'm being facetious when I make fun of them for being clueless about Tucker Carlson. They knew and keeping Tucker Carlson on was a business decision, point blank, period. They knew he was pumping racist rage bait into the brains of boomers every single night for years, and they allowed it to continue. And you're probably thinking, well, it'd be nice to see the entire fucking organization collapse. But the problem is that there's a demand for white supremacy in this country, and so long as that demand exists, there's going to be an organization or institution that pops up and takes the place of Fox News. Since Tucker Carlson's firing, by the way, Newsmax's ratings have surged, and they've even added a five-person panel show just like Fox News. In other words, we'll basically be playing white supremacist whack-a-mole with right-wing media outlets in perpetuity. Because white supremacy, unfortunately, is deeply embedded in American society. And white rage simply isn't going to just dissipate with time if somebody isn't feeding that to them. If Fox News or Tucker Carlson goes away, um, that would be good, right? I'm very happy that Fox News fired Tucker Carlson, to be clear. And I genuinely believe that him being fired is good for American democracy. But, like, if Fox News just goes away and Tucker Carlson's career is over, white supremacy isn't going to go away as well. White supremacy isn't going to die with Tucker Carlson's career or Fox News, unfortunately. It is an ongoing battle that our country has to deal with. And the problem persists because 
America has never actually grappled with white supremacy. There are people who talk about it, sure, but there hasn't been policy steps taken to actually detach white supremacy from our institutions and our culture. And because of that, you know, it's going to remain, unfortunately, a feature, not a bug of our system since it was built on white supremacy. And that's really sad. But at the end of the day, I don't want to be like too doomer here. The good thing is that Tucker Carlson was fired from Fox News. He lost the biggest platform in the country. But to see the backlash that Fox News faced after firing a pretty open white supremacist, I think that that should be a wake-up call for people who weren't aware that this problem existed.